Goody Shell Tron here. You can call me Shells and I'm back, back. Back out again with a brand new video, and I'm gonna keep it a bow, Berry Biscuit. This news I'm about to share with y'all right now is very, very close to exactly what I've been waiting to see out of the Carolina Panthers, and I'm gonna get to that here in just a second. But before I do, I have one question for you What do you value most in a coach at the professional level? Is it success? Is it a scheme? Is it wins? Is it leadership? Is it experience? What is the most valuable thing in a coach to you? To me, it's none of those things. I would like for a coach to have any one or maybe even all of those things. But for me, the biggest thing I value in a coach is the ability and the willingness to adjust. To be able to see that something isn't working, identify what it is that's not working, and say, okay, I still do have confidence in what my plan A was, but for right now it's not working, so let's find ways to make small changes, small tweaks, and we can find a way to win this game, or at least have a better chance of winning our next games through adjustments. Being willing and able to say, I might have been wrong in this situation, and being willing and able to make the necessary changes is important, not just for a coach, but for people in general, but this is not a psychology class. This all has a point. Just earlier today in a virtual presser, Matt Rule mentioned there's gonna be three guys on the team that he hopes to get a few more reps out of. One or two of these guys might be getting a lot more reps than they got this past week versus the Raiders. But I did mention at the very top, this was almost what I expected. There was one guy who was left off this list of players he wanted to see get a little bit more playing time. He wanted to see be pushed a little bit more into the scheme, into the flow of the game. That's Ian Thomas. I've been saying this for a minute now. Ian Thomas is an impactful player if you allow him to be, if you give him chances. We haven't been doing that. I will not focus on that right now. I will wait until after this Bucks game and see what I see if the coach does really want to use him a little bit more. We'll see what Joe Brady and Rev Roll have in store for Ian. But for right now, let's get to the three players that he did mention by name. In this first tweet by Elena Getzenberg, she says, Matt Rule says they would like to get Mike Davis involved more, but that CMC's 26 touches were where they wanted him. As we know, for the last several years, last couple years really, C-Mac has been getting the bulk of the snaps on offense. And when I say the bulk, I mean literally all but just a few. He's been getting 97, 96, 98% of the snaps on offense. Just this past week, he had 97% and Mike Davis had 4%. I think he touched the field three times total. Look, I know we just paid C-Mac the big bucks. But unless you're trying to squeeze everything out of him right now, you have to find a way to get other guys involved in the backfield. I mean, if you're going to be spending $3 million on Mike Davis, you better be able to look. If he ain't on the field, running the ball, catching the ball off the backfield, both things he can do at a pretty decently high level. You better find a way to get $3 million of value out of him somehow. Maybe he's doing your kid's book report or something. I don't know. But you're going to have to use Mike Davis at some point. 26 touches for C-Max sounds about right. But... If C-Max touches aren't going down and Mike Davis's touches are going up, that means there's going to be less passes for Teddy Bridgewater. Unless those are going to be passes to Mike Davis, then that means less targets for guys like Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore, and Curtis Samuel, including uh, Ian Thomas and other guys on the roster right now. I would really want to see how we actually adjust and how our guys in the wide receiver core are going to react and perform, getting less opportunities in favor of Mike Davis. And look, it's a contract year for Curtis Samuel. I'm sure he wants to get his numbers. And you don't bring in Robbie Anderson and have the kind of receiving threats we have to just run the ball, pound the rock all game. I really want to see what kind of balance Matt Rule has in store here, what kind of offensive scheme Joe Brady has, and how he's going to bring in Mike Davis to make this offense not only better, more cohesive, but keep everyone happy because these dudes at the wide receiver spot, every single wide receiver has an ego. Everyone thinks they're one of the best in the league. Some think they are the best in the league. And these guys don't want to get only four or five targets a week. They want their targets. The big three in our team all had at least eight targets in this Raiders game. If Mike Davis is getting pushed into the lineup, he's not going to get just one or two opportunities. He's probably getting four or five plus. That's taking away from one of these guys. Is it always going to be an even split? And while I do agree that Mike Davis should get more touches, I'm more interested in the how than the what. How exactly do we work this out? It's going to be very, very interesting. The next guy on the list is Yitor Gross Matos. Look, I think we all understood 
he did not really get that many opportunities. And that's mostly because we saw, look, Stephen Wesley looked a whole lot better on the field than YGM. It is what it is. YGM only played 16 of the, I think, 66 total snaps. That is only 25% of the snaps and Steven Weatherly played 60% of the snaps. Look, he looked better. He played more. I understand you want to get your team the best opportunities to win, but I guess if you're trying to build a team that's trying to grow into the future, if this isn't really it, look, this year is not our win window. We have to give these guys experience. It's a really hard wire you have to balance on. You have to walk this really smart. How much time do you give YGM and how much time do you give Stephen Weatherly? And how much value do you put in letting YGM learn through his mistakes and potentially giving up plays Stephen Weatherly wouldn't? Or do you play Stephen Weatherly and try to go for the win, but you kind of stunt YGM's growth because he's not getting playing time? We will have to see. That's an adjustment that I really want to see. I think that's more on Phil Snow. I'm not so sure how involved Matt Rule will be involved in that one, but that is a big one. Because I think we saw that YGM may or may not really be ready for... Look, look, I'll say it like this. The Raiders' O-line was really good. And you're playing against Josh Jacobs, a guy who I thought should have been the Offensive Rookie of the Year last year. That's a tough first game, okay? You're a rookie going against one of the best in the league. It's, it's, it is what it is. But we do have to see what we got out of YGM. It's our number two pick in the draft this season. So... We got to see what we got out of him. Steven Weatherly can still come in situationally, or they can maybe even work things out a little differently, but the split can't be 60%, 25%. You probably have to bring those a little bit closer together. And this last tweet from Jonathan M. Alexander should come as no surprise to literally anyone. He says, expect Rasul Douglas to get more playing time moving forward. Matt Rule said that was the plan from the beginning, but he was impressive in his first game. Look, the point about Rasul Douglas getting more playing time was not surprising. Matt Rule saying that was the plan from the beginning. I want to know, was the plan to have Rasul Douglas play more in place of Eli Apple? Or was the plan to get Rasul Douglas more snaps in place of Dante Jackson? Eli Apple is out right now, so we understand there's no competition between those two right now. But Troy Pride wasn't looking all that great. He looked all right. He looked all right. But you're going to start Rasul Douglas in there instead. If Dante Jackson is still healthy, it's going to be those two. But Dante Jackson, that's the whole sentence, but Dante Jackson. Rasul Douglas right now is probably our best corner on the roster. It was a good move to make. He may not be the best corner, you know, in the league, but he did the best one we got right now. So we got to rock with him for the time being. And that one was a no-brainer to me. I think all three of these guys can have impact. Obviously, Rasul Douglas, I think Mike Davis, you, you got to play him. You got $3 million in the book, you, you got to play him. And YGM, you have to play him because you spent very high draft capital on him and you have to let him make mistakes so he can grow as a rookie. Going for these wins right now in 2020, there's more value in letting YGM get experience than going for our 7th or 8th win in this season. I'd rather lose and see YGM be better next year then win and have YGM still stunted at a rookie level in his second season in the league, if you get what I'm saying here. So I, I respect these three names. I would have liked to see him mention Ian Thomas, but I'm going to hold out. I'm going to cool off right now. I'm going to cool out. I'm going to wait and see what the plan is in this second game versus the Bucks coming up this Sunday at 1 p.m. I really want to see what we do here. I'm going to have some words. If once again, Ian Thomas is not in this lineup and Ian Thomas is not a part of this offensive scheme. I'm going to have some words for it. But overall, this news right here was pretty positive. I like seeing guys willing to adjust. That's the most impactful thing I think a coach can be willing to do. That's how I feel about it. What are your thoughts on these three guys? Are there any other guys on the team you want to see get more playing time? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. And you already know to do with that like button. Cheers to you. Appreciate the chance. Being told y'all I've been the man. Being told y'all I had the gift. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Real ones gonna recommend. Count this as another win.